everybody? Welcome back to the most celebrated podcast in pickleball because Major League Pickleball is breaking the internet, it seems, every single week with star-studded ownership and beyond, which today we will be introducing you to one of the newest ownership groups. Wait till you hear about this one. This is Inside Major League Pickleball. If you're new here, welcome to your new obsession. If you're back, we thank you for joining us this season. Joined by my counterparts, former pro and Olympic volleyballer, future pro pickleballer. He's aiming for Tom Brady's team, but I don't know. After today, I think he might have a have a new team in sight. Casey Patterson, of course, Tyson Apostle joins us every week. Father Nature, a man with a face for TV, he says, and a voice for radio. I didn't say that with as much conviction this time. Sorry, Tyson. I'm not. I'm not fully there. Uh, pickleball okay. fashionista. I... <laughs> pickleball fashionista, mm-hmm. and then of course the co-founder of 35V and Boardroom, as well as Kevin Durant's longtime manager. He is one of the newest owners of Major League Pickleball, Rich Kleiman, joining us today. We will comment with you in just a moment. But first, a shout out to our sponsors, starting with ProXR, the official paddle of MLP, the only paddle custom fit for your grip, and Knock Around, the official sunglasses of MLP, quality shades that won't break the bank. Appreciate that. Aura Organic, the official nutrition partner of MLP, transform your health with plant-based nutrition from Aura, and Franklin, the official ball of Major League Pickleball. The Franklin X40 delivers the best in-game flight out of any ball on the market. Wow, Michelle, that was, Nailed I mean, it. every week, Got 10 it. out of 10, except for like the lack of conviction. Uh, and <laughs> it seems like your belief in me as a voice for radio and a face for TV, which uh, would be the first time in human history anybody's had that. So sure, <laughs> I understand. I just feel bad. I don't yeah. like introducing you that way. I need you to find don't? a new line for you. No. Why? Because you don't believe it. I don't believe I'm, it. I'm making you say something you don't believe in. <laughs> okay. Well, you brainstorm and I'll let you surprise me next week. Okay. Uh, like you said, Michelle, we are here with one of the brand new owners in Major League Pickleball, Rich Kleiman. Rich, how are you doing today, dude? I'm good when I hear myself introduced as one of the newest owners in Major League Pickleball. Oh my God. I don't think there's <laughs> ever been a title next to my name that I've ever been this excited about. That's so good. I mean, I read through your Wikipedia page. I know a little bit about you. I've been on the 35 Ventures or 35V website, read all up on that. It seems like you have your hand in pretty much everything I've ever spent money on. Right? Same. (laughs) So now that you're in pickleball, that's just one more thing. Uh, And you are... Kevin Durant's longtime manager. We saw him playing pickleball. There was a video that was shared all over the internet a few weeks ago and uh, a little foreshadowing to what's happening now. What does it mean to you guys to be the newest family members of Major League Pickleball, having your own team? I like that, family members. Is it a family or are we all going to be going at each other's necks shortly? (laughs) We're so a family cousins, with everybody. We love some of them. Right. Yeah, family yeah. is everybody, but you know, you love more than others. I don't know. <laughs> with these right new now, owners, I think it's. <laughs> I got a. Fa- I have a big family, so I joined this league to win. Man, we came in this to win. But I, I got to be honest. In all seriousness, I am that excited about it. And that trip to Austin, Texas, where Kevin got to play and absorb the culture of the sport a bit was really imperative, I thought, before we could go forward and do this, because that's the nature of our partnership, is that one of us may lean in more to something or have more of an affinity to something, but it's important that we both see it and we both understand why we're doing it, Um, because we didn't do this as an investment. This wasn't, let me get some exposure in pickleball because it's on fire right now. This came from playing the sport starting over July 4th weekend and quickly falling in love with it, playing every day that I could and then becoming an observer (laughs) of the culture and, you know, following every social media site and reading about it. And to me, there hasn't been one element yet of how I've fallen for this sport that I haven't loved. And when Kevin walked on the court, true to form to what everyone says about it being such a democratized sport and people feeling comfortable 
to walk on and be able to play in minutes, even if you're not good to be able to play in minutes, was that when Kevin got there, we were at someone's house in Austin. They had two courts. There was probably 30 or 40 people there. A lot of the pros were there. And I could see how people were teaching each other while they were playing. People were trying to teach and compete. And there was this like shit talking element that reminded me of like playing pickup basketball. And also you're in control, yes. like you're in control of the point. And whether you're good or not, you're in control of it. And I think that's what's making it so, I think why everyone is connecting with it so quickly. And that's why I said family at the beginning, the pickleball family. Everybody is so welcoming. They're so excited about this sport. Just like you said, you come in, you show up to a court, you don't know fully what to expect. And everybody is so welcoming, ready to teach you, ready to play, ready to invite you in a game. And uh, yeah, sure, we're your family here, Rich, because we embrace everybody at MLP. But you, as a owner of a team, are obviously going to have your uh, lifelong enemies on the other side of the court when it comes to uh, the Major League Pickleball venues. Um, why pickleball? And why MLP? Yeah, I mean, well, I'll answer the MLP one first. I mean... I think that when I was looking at all the different organizations that were in the sport, the one thing that I really loved about the MLP was the team format and the culture that a team format would bring. If you think about the PGA or the ATP or the WTA, while there's obviously the sports are incredibly successful and the organizations I'm sure are incredibly successful, there is no fan that has a relationship with the PGA. There is no fan that has a relationship with the ATP or the WTA. The fact that this league is building teams with communities that are gonna be developed and fan bases that will be developed, it allows people like the NBA or like leagues that we've grown up watching to fall in love with the league and what it represents. And you do that by having these rivalries, by having these franchises, the dynasties, the upsets, the Cinderella stories. And all of those things really come out more and more in a team format. And the fact that there is still a nod to the individual play and that players can find their individual success as well, I think covered all bases. And then when you see the ownership groups that are joining, albeit they weren't all there when we started this process, you understand what that element can bring, but ultimately it's the sport and the league that will make this thing work. And I felt really strongly about the leadership. Obviously, Steve is this like bigger than life personality who you can tell just wants this whole thing to win. And, you know, listen, it's the beginning. And it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity, at least in our lifetime, to be able to be a part of an organization that's growing at the same exact time that the sport is exploding in popularity. So it's kind of the unknown. And as someone that's invested in technology for a while, someone that is trying to build a media business, it's built on the unknown. You think you see something, but you evolve and you pivot quickly. And I think that the beauty of this opportunity is to have a voice in how it grows. So while I am going to be very competitive, you know, by investing, we're all now invested in making sure that this league works first and foremost. And, you know, I think that that's really what's the beauty of all of this. I think that uh, my favorite part is I'm already envisioning Rich rolling up to the challenge court playing the guys that beat him down the first couple of times you started learning playing, right? But now you're wearing your team jersey and the dude across is wearing like a hard eights jersey or something, right? So they're, they're, it's like a Celtics Lakers type thing, right? So you have this rad ri rivalry, right? So now I show up and I'm just going to smoke the dudes that used to like beat me down at the challenge court in the local oh, courts. Dude, That's I'm ready. right. So there it is. You're competing I nonstop. Yeah, I swore up. <laughs> when I, I played, when I played in Austin after like a day of games, uh, a bunch of the guys there told me I was a four and a half, which I thought was respectable since I had just started playing, but I need to understand what my ceiling is because I think part of right. this is going to be right. my acceptance at 45 years old. If I'm going to be, <laughs> a half, I'm cool with that. But I think if I can get enough gameplay in, I still have a long ways to go. I mean, it I, to be, listen, this is a bold statement, but I think it's the best I've ever been at a particular sport in my entire life. Yes. <laughs> that's not that's... an understatement at all. I feel like, I feel like that's what a lot of us kind of feel like. It's like, this is our chance to be a pro athlete with this sport, albeit maybe more reachable for some than others. Maybe, maybe not as much not. for me. 
maybe we'll leave that to the Olympians. Um, I want to know, Rich, bring me back to your early beginnings with your relationship with KD. How did you guys come into this formation, into this partnership, into this friendship? I, you know, you, you've had a relationship with him for so long. Where did that begin and what's the story yeah, there? Yeah, I, you know, I, I come from the music business originally, even though I was a sports fan in my entire life and really obsessed with the culture around the NBA, even as a little kid. And one of the artists I was managing said that there was uh, a Jay-Z concert in the city, which I was going to, I was working for him at that time. And that Kevin was in town, he had just won Rookie of the Year, and he wanted to know if I would go with KD to the concert. So even though he's a rookie, and I'm at that point, probably in my early 30s uh, or late 20s, it was like, oh my God, this is Kevin Durant. You know, because when you're a fan of basketball, you fall in love with these guys in high school and college. And I just marveled at who he was as a player. So to be able to go to the game with him, I mean, to the concert with him was exciting. And when I met him, I picked up on certain parts of his personality that, you know, I understood. There was this humility about him that when um, Jay-Z wanted him to go back and say what's up to him in the, in the dressing room, Kevin felt like it wasn't his time yet to even be able to go meet one of his idols. And it was this like self-awareness or almost too much humility because he still was Kevin Durant. But I had his phone number um, after that night. And from then on, I would stay in touch with him, which by the way, I've shamelessly done my whole life. Like if I get access to you, I'm coming for it. And I always have been like that. So. <laughs> I kept texting him and he loves talking basketball as everyone in the world knows. So we talked basketball for years. And then when I was at rock nation in 2012, now this is four years after meeting Kevin for the first time. And we transitioned into sports. I was the first person to raise my hand and say, I want it. This is my life's calling. Like, let me get into sports. I loved music. I had carved out a pretty decent career for myself, but I knew at that point in my life, I was 34, 35, that this was my chance if I was gonna really get into the sports world. And understand 10 years ago, the idea of getting in the sports world, way different than it even is now, 10 years later, it still felt like you gotta be a lawyer to be an agent, or you gotta go work for a team or a league. And I didn't have any of that. I didn't graduate college. I had no experience that I felt could get me in the sports world. What was happening at that time, was sports was really modeling itself after music and hip hop a bit. And that these athletes were seeing how enterprise could be built and how you could build an entire business with this star at the center with all these different revenue streams and create everything that you want that's authentically you. So I reached out to Kevin and life is timing. And he was a little unsure of where he was gonna be with his agent. He knew he wasn't 100% comfortable with what he was building for himself off the court. And I think the allure of Jay-Z and his connection with me gave him enough of a confidence to come sign with Rock Nation. And as soon as he did, it was that little equity that we had had from meeting and staying in touch that mm -hmm. really gave us the ammunition and like the momentum in this relationship. And we just built slowly and our relationship was evolving every year. I was his agent. I was his manager and agent. Then I'm his business partner. And then we go on our own and we start a company together and it's just been that process that's allowed us to really earn one another's trust and for him to realize that, you know, that I not only had his best interest in mind, which is something that all athletes have their guard up about, you know, and, and it's the reality and understandably so, but also that I understood the right way to build what we wanted to build together. And we're still building, you know, that's the beauty of it is we're still building, but there's always this trust in that, like, all right, cool. Rich is really excited about this. Let me check this out in Austin. Or if Kevin says to me, no, nah, I don't think we should do this. I'm listening, you know, like I'll, I would have pushed back on pickleball, but I'm listening because I believe in his instincts as well. And we have to respect one another in, in our partnership. So what was the early conversation then with the pickleball between you <laughs> right. two? Well, all summer I was like texting him and I'm like, yo, this sport is insane. I'm playing pickleball. We got to do something with pickleball. <laughs> Check this out, check this out. And that a lot of our banter is like, I also will just shamelessly, like I'll keep texting him and keep texting him. So when I sat down with him finally and explained the business and the organization and how the league runs and how the economics run, 
he's a, he listens, he understands, he's a smart dude. So he got it and got the opportunity. Then I told him some of the other people that were looking at teams, which got his competitive juices flowing. And then we went and hung out at this ranch in Austin. And it was the culture at that point, which I think really connected with him and, and sold him and, you know, obviously double sold me. And you mentioned these other owners coming into the sport. Now we have LeBron James and his investment group. We have Tom Brady and Kim Kleisters. Now we have Rich Kleiman and Kevin Durant. Who's the favorite out of that group? Who's put the owners on the court? Oh, Who's winning that? If thing? the owners are playing, then it's it's us. KD's got the most. <laughs> so good. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm easily, I mean, I heard Ryan Harwood was really good. So let's leave uh -huh. his team out of it for a second. But I think that I'm going to be the best player owner there is. And then I got KD's reach. His wingspan is insane. So, I mean, I feel pretty good about our chances lining up against any of these owners. You, you're in New York. You've been in New York a long time, right? All right. Did you know Ryan Harwood from before? Because I know that some of you New York guys kind of mix and mingle a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, I've met him a few times. We're not close. We'll get close now because we're all in this family. But, yeah, I'm born and raised in New York my whole life. Is Ryan born and okay. raised here? I don't – I think so. I, I, He's been there a really long time, if not. Uh, but I, I think he born at least went to school. Though. I don't know if he was born right, and raised. We'll have to fact check that. <laughs> Yeah, we sure will. <laughs> so why we pick sure a ball? If it, if it wasn't an investment necessarily, um, from what you said earlier, what other than like playing it, uh, we, we kind of touched on it, but just, um, I don't know, like it, 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 it's not surely just for the investment. No, it's the opposite. Why? It's not for, I mean, it's not for the investment because with most investments, you're thinking about how you can get capital down the road or how long you have to hold on to this investment. This is the opportunity to help build a league, to help formalize a sports right. organization in this sport that's exploding in pop culture and exploding all over the world, all over the country for sure. The fact that we can play a hand in helping build this and have this come to shape is really like too good of an opportunity. Um, and obviously the investment I think is great because I believe in it. But it's really about the opportunity to be a part of it and the opportunity to, you know, be a part of something that imagine if 100 years ago I could have gotten into Major League Baseball or to the NFL when this was all coming into form and to think that I could be one of those early kind of pioneers of buying a team and helping formalize this entire organization, I think was just like, I mean, it couldn't be more exciting. What uh, you you touched on that a little bit uh, in a few statements here. You get to help shape the future of the league and the future of the sport to a certain degree. Do you have anything in particular in mind in bringing that to the people? Uh, like what, how yeah. are we going to shape major league pickleball yeah. and pickleball in general? Yeah. I mean, well, I'll tell you a few ways and, and it's endless because it's not just going to be me. It's going to be you three. It's going to be all of us, but we have to a kind of put our money where our mouth is. So you can't call the sport democratize and then not give access to everybody. So wherever we end up, whatever city we end up, building courts in underserved communities and giving people the access to this game at a young age is crucial. Number two, not trying to compete with historically successful sports leagues and think that that's the way you have to do it and carve out our own path, figure out what our events will look mm. like. They did a great job in Columbus, but constantly trying to make it better, figuring out what is our media approach going to be? How are we going to empower these players to be able to make real money for themselves, to commit to this game, bring in sponsors that understand that aren't just sponsoring because it's of the moment, but want to grow with the game as well. And also I think the competition, you know, the sport is, so it's, it's, it's interesting because when you watch it live or you watch it on television, it takes a second to realize that you're actually as entertained as you are because you realize that like, okay, you never would watch someone play ping pong, but why not? 
right? It's pretty competitive, <laughs> pretty fun sport yeah. to watch, but it for some reason won't check every box. Then you think about the idea that tennis, while it has an incredible fan base, and obviously this past US Open, you could see the excitement and the sport is constantly infused by new young talent, but it's still never going to connect with everybody. To me, this sport has the opportunity, if marketed right, if presented right, and if given access to everybody, to kind of check all those boxes in that, like, it's fast paced. There's some of the beauty and, and kind of strategy of tennis. There's some of that kind of like quick hand eye reflexes that you would get from ping pong. But it's a real sport where you're sweating and grinding it out and making these miraculous shots. And how do you present that then and make that like something that's attainable and relatable for people is the challenge because people have to fall in love with the competition. You know what I'm saying? It's like you could fall in love with the sport and playing it, but you have to fall in love with watching it and fall in love with the competition. And I think that's going to be a challenge, but it's an exciting one. Right. We just need you to, to launch, you know, your version of swagger, but in pickleball, you know, you it, <laughs> and you've got to be the star, right? Like the businessman that's, you know, He's in 40s and he's like rejuvenated and starting this new sport that's just exploding, right? And just see you running up the hill, doing your push-ups. We're driving up just like the show. I do it. <laughs> what, what would it be if like, I sit my family down I say, guys, yes, <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't enough. This isn't enough. If God is calling me and he's got a pickleball racket in his hand. My destiny is here. But oh, so part of my business, we do have this media platform boardroom and I'm committed to making not just our team, the entire league, the business of the sport, all of it have a real presence on our platform. And I think that's what's so exciting about these ownership groups is beyond the names, you know, these names are names because they've built successful businesses either on a court or on the playing field or in the boardroom and to be able to have everybody's shared strengths come and add a little bit of that to the league. I mean, you know, that's priceless. Yeah, agree. I love, I love when you're talking about the future vision too, with like, especially that community aspect, especially um, in your partnership and your commitment with Kevin Durant to, to give back. I know with your business ventures, that's been a, a high priority for you too. Um, why do you think pickleball – I mean, Steve Kuhn has touched on this a lot too. Of like, He, he thinks it's maybe it, – it's not even a hyperbole to say like pickleball could help unify a country that desperately needs it. And that begins, to your point, in these underserved communities in a way that everybody can have access to this. So where do you see the future of how pickleball and your role in it, Major League Pickleball, um, can help bridge that gap and just make – the world a happier place, which sounds so corny, but anyone that knows and loves the sport believes that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I listen, I mean, there's like the reality and then the belief and the belief is all you need because the reality is nothing can um, completely call and fix the divide in our country. <laughs> but what I do think the, the belief is, and it's based on the feeling that people have when they play the sport is the fact that when you're, when you're uncomfortable or you're fearful of doing something, you tend to avoid it. And I think that a lot of times the reason why golf hasn't necessarily diversified as much is because there's no access. The sport's been stereotyped a bit and it doesn't feel like someone really has a chance. Obviously Tiger Woods broke down walls and, it's not that the sport doesn't have any diversity because it does, but in terms of what the stigma of the sport was with pickleball, I think from the beginning, maybe in the way beginning, it still carried a little bit of that, but in the last 10 years, and especially the last two years, the idea that somebody can learn how to play in minutes and can utilize other mm -hmm. skill sets, hand-eye coordination, thought and strategy, creativity, you know, physical attributes, those type of things, check multiple boxes, allows more people to come play. It allows men and women to compete at the same level. It allows a pro to be on the court with somebody that's a four and a half and still be able to compete and play in the same vein. And that can't happen. I couldn't get out on a court with a tennis pro and somebody who's never played before and go, yo, let's all play tennis together right now. There'd be no right. way any sport right. like that. <laughs> that's so true. It's so, so true. true. It's the biggest... 
the biggest, broadest scope of of partners and just random people from all over that I've played with. And I'm like, I've never played a sport like this. It's always been basketball, volleyball, like tall dude sports where I'm like, look, I'm with monster athletes. And in this sport, it's like I'm taking my 11 year old out and we're playing a 60 year old and a, a, you know, a 15 year old. It's random, just all over, which I would agree. It's so cool. It's so cool. And it's also, um, it's a sign of the times in that, or of what's to come in that, the game will change because of new people playing. So I already know right. certain little idiosyncrasies of the game that have changed in the five months that I've followed it. So we can only imagine what four years from now we're going to be watching and realize like, oh my God, I didn't even know anybody could hit a shot like that. And now everybody's hitting it. Like <laughs> right. And that's what's pretty fascinating. I don't even think people have played with the instrument long enough to realize like what they can even do. And then there's the <laughs> then there's the idea of um, somebody asked me. Kevin asked me. Kevin was like, "If Serena Williams played pickleball tomorrow, would she be the best player in the world?" And I was like, "No." He was like, "Of course she would." And I was like, "Of course she won't." I'm like, the point is going to be like figuring out who is going to be great at pickleball. What does that athlete look like? You could be an amazing tennis player and become amazing at pickleball. But you sure are not going to have only amazing tennis players that become the best pickleball players. It's a different skill set completely. Right. So, I, so yeah, I agree. It's like, who's going to be incredible? Who's going to be like, is it just going to be like, oh, my God, guess what? Uh, Federer's knee is better. He's playing pickleball. He's the best that's ever played. Probably not. It's going to be <laughs> this like 19-year-old kid who didn't even play singles at University of Tennessee but realize like, yo, you know what? Maybe I'm actually a pickleball player and ends up taking that skill set he has <laughs> yeah. to being okay in this to becoming the best pickleball player in the world. Yeah. 100%. I think uh, you see these kids now, especially with uh, more and more young kids getting into pickleball at an earlier age. I, you're right. In four years, we're going to see a 17, 18-year-old phenom who grew up playing pickleball <laughs> Doing things with the paddle we've never even imagined. And guess what? Done. Maybe and, fat and uh, out of shape too. That's what I'm saying. Like, I do think. Right. That, I do yeah. think clearly there's a level of athleticism <laughs> that you need, but I think it's a different type of athleticism. I hope I don't get knocked for that. But what I mean by it is like you have to know an angle to read to get to the ball, or when you jump and when you don't jump, how to not end up in no man's land on the court. So that's not always athleticism. Clearly, if someone lobs it. And you can jump as high as you can jump, or you're six foot six, you're going to have a better chance. And clearly, if you could move around the court like Alcaraz, the, the, the 19 year old tennis player, you're going to have a better chance of getting to a ball on the side of the court, for sure. A great athlete will always have an advantage, but it's not paramount in the same way. You have to be yeah. fit, but it's not paramount, in my opinion, in the same way. There's so many stealthy pickleball players where you roll up, you're like, dude, we got this. And they're just gnarly. <laughs> and you're like, the guy can barely walk and he just smashed me. Like, what just happened? And that's the beauty of it. And that's why it's so enticing. It's like, I could roll up. The dude that looks like he can, he's wearing an ankle brace, can barely walk, just crushed me down. I'm like, wait a minute, dude. I'm, I'm an Olympian. I should never lose to anyone who's not dedicated their life to sports. And I'm getting smashed all the time by people who haven't even played tennis or pickleball. They're like, oh, I played badminton growing up. And or yeah, I was like field hockey. I'm like, what is going on? There's just all walks of life that are just that's crushing why I sport. think Steve uh, said to me once, like chess on wheels, and that's exactly right. Is that there's a competition yeah. within the game of chess that is like the closest board game or game of sorts that you can almost feel like you're playing a sport, and then add to it the level of thought and strategy and creativity you're competing on another level or playing cards or something like that. Now you're doing it in a full on right. workout in a full on competitive sport. I think it's like, it's like they were, it's like whoever created it. And I know who created it, but whoever it's like balances out and lands perfectly where you get a little bit of both. And that's yeah. what the difference is. It's so true. It's so yeah. true. That's a great analogy. And, uh, Rich, I want to say that uh, I'm very excited to see you in the sport, to see you as part of uh, the as part of MLP. I know that uh, you've done incredible work bringing basketball 
to those communities and uh, making sure that everybody has access to basketball courts. And I'm very, very excited to see you do that same thing in pickleball. I know that it will help grow the sport and, you know, broaden its reach completely. Uh, what else can we expect uh, from you and uh, 35 Ventures in 2023? We're going to see something spectacular. What is your game plan going into the season? Um, well, I mean, I think that obviously we're going to have to draft an incredibly competitive team and we're going to have to make sure that we're able to give the resources to the players to be able to stay focused and feel like they're part of a team. Um, and I think that way they can all motivate each other. But I also want to make sure that all of them feel like as individuals that their own games are getting honed and that they're mastering their own craft. And then I want to have fun. I want to have fun. This sport is fun. So I want to be able to bring fun elements. I want to be able to have our team feel like we're really a community and whatever city we end up in, uh, have that same effect in the city that we're in and that community that we're in. And, um, and, and then who knows, you know, it's going to be about what are we wearing? How are we walking out onto the court? I mean, it's, it's like a blank canvas. And to me, that's what's like incredibly exciting. And then weaving the storytelling and the content play into what we're already building from a content perspective is going to be exciting. And I think if we all do that, all of us as owners with our respective platforms, it's going to be really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it. That's, that's so true. And that's going to be so exciting to see. Yeah. I think there's a, uh, you, you're in Coinbase. I know you do some NFT stuff too. And uh common phrase is to the moon. And I think uh, with your help, Rich and KD sure. and 35 ventures, that's where we're going, baby. Uh, to the moon. Rich, I want to thank you so much for joining us and for giving us your time. We're super excited to see you in 2023 and watch who you draft, see what uh, team you come up with. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you out, out on the course Sounds soon. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, right, Rich. Take care. Yep. Take Thanks, care. Rich. We'll see you. That was awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. Love that. You can tell he loves it. He just he's loves cool. the game. He's yeah. all about it. I know. Just so I, fun. Uh, really exciting. I mean, the last three weeks with uh, all of the new owners coming in, like I can't even begin to imagine what 2023 Major League Pickleball is going to look like. Uh, Michelle. Yeah. You were in Columbus. Ugh. I, I was watching the stream, and I have to say the stream looked awesome oh, like, yeah. it looked so awesome you sounded amazing the oh, backdrop with the graffiti all the camera angles the lighting i think they really got it right uh, i think so too how was the event in person it was i would have to say of all the events that i've been to had to be up there with rowdiest atmosphere and the players what? commented on that too yes. rowdiest uh, what was happening yes. It was just like energized. Like I think people like understand the concept now. They know what they're not only what they're watching, but they know more about Major League Pickleball and what the league is really doing. Sorry, Maverick, he's so excited. Um, it, like it was just loud. It was vibrant. It was. I, it just felt more alive to me than the other <laughs> events. And I don't know, because Dreamland was pretty good, too, because it's pretty well established there. But I think for the first time for this event to be in Columbus, which is still pretty much brand new to, uh, you know, that region, the people showed up. O-H-I-O, -O, coming from a Michigan fan, <laughs> the Buckeyes, they know how to get it done when it comes to their sports teams. <laughs> it was cool. It was really fun. It was special. I mean, I I flew in for like less than 24 hours to be a part of it because it was, it was such a fun, fun event. But I would say the, the crowd and the atmosphere stood out to me. And the new bells and whistles to make it look, you know, a little bit more buttoned up in that way. Yeah, it looked really so, spectacular. Sounded amazing. Um, yeah. BLQK, are they just unstoppable? They did it again. They did They're it again. I know. The best all around that, team. Yeah, I thought that the hard eights, and I don't know about you guys, I thought, I, especially talking to some of the players before, I was like, I think the hard eights are going to sneak an upset just because – they really believed in not only their talent, but just the intangibles. Like they felt like BLQK was just like a little bit too confident. But now I'm like, well, I guess they have a reason to be that confident because they really are like through and through. Um, so tough to stop. I mean, they have three, if you look at the duper rankings across the board, three of the top four players, 
across across the the league on their on their team. So how do you stop them? You know, so I don't know. I think things will be interesting once we expand, once we see what the draft looks like next season, how they're going to operate in terms of are they going to pick franchise players? Are they going to be able to protect certain players? Do they have to start completely from scratch? So I think that will be. Uh, that will be interesting to watch the new rule. And, you know, Steve and Brooks and, and those guys will be coming up with all the new strategies to make things interesting. But as of now, I BLQK, and I think really one of the – and the ranchers look so good in Newport. You guys were watching the same thing. But yes. because Paris Todd was injured, now that injury kind of looks more glaring. Like, okay, when she's full strength, completely different story for this team. Not to say – I mean, she was the MVP this weekend, but not to say the other players are – not as essential, but they're, yeah, I mean, they're stacked. They're stacked. She was also the MVP off the court. Like every clip of the, yes. the guys, or if there was a mixed game and she wasn't it, she's like pogoing and squatting and yelling, like, let's go. So much energy. It was so fun. <laughs> I was like, that was like almost more entertaining than watching the rally. It was like, okay, there she is. And then she's like running on and high fiving and jumping. It was so <laughs> cool. She's like all in on the team aspect, which is rad. And her uh, outfits. That, she's got the best yeah, dress right? player in the game. I don't know if Tyson, she's putting up a good fight against she's... the pickleball's fashionista. Oh, I would agree. <laughs> oh, no. Way more colorway options. Uh, <laughs> she's... You should have seen what I wore this morning to the courts. Come on. <laughs> 17 colors. 17 just in my shorts. <laughs> Seven different kinds of smoke. Do you uh, guys see uh, Mary's behind the back or behind yes, the head? Yes, behind oh, the head. <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, and they almost cool. they could have won that rally. They could have, it but was, I think it threw. Uh, was it who was with who was with her? Was it uh, who was on her side? He went for the forehand like roll, just really yeah. quick and hit in the net, but barely. Was almost, it AJ Kohler? It, it might have been. No, I can't remember. It wasn't was AJ her. Kohler. I all I can think of is the shot. I remember. I just remember DJ partner, hitting it right at her, and just, missing it, and then looking and being like, "Oh my gosh, that was insane!" It was. Uh, uh, Adiamo. Julian oh, okay. Arnold. Julian no. Arnold. Yeah. He's with the, no? he's with the ranch. Oh, so he's not on that team. Who was it? Oh, 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 oh. You're right. You're right. Um, I'm, I'm getting him and, um, I'm looking at the DJ highlight Young. again. Yeah, you're right. It was Julian, Julian Arnold. Arnold. You're right. Yeah. Julian Arnold. Yes, yes, yes. So sorry, he missed sorry, that sorry. forehand roll, I but they were you. still, oh. when they looked at each other, they were both so excited about that didn't matter. the headshot. It yeah, didn't yeah. matter. They yeah. lost the rally. They were like, that was insane. I can't believe that. that yeah, they, they won the rally, but I'm still embarrassed for them because I hit the sickest shot ever created. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was really intense. So, um, what was your guy's favorite part about watching this weekend? I mean, I, highlight reels. Honestly, shot, but... I, highlight reels, I mean, sure. I liked the just the full coverage. I liked watching it on CBS Sports, but like – all the angles were perfect. The lighting was great every single angle. A lot of times with the sun coming in from somewhere, uh, yeah. there's an angle or two that sometimes has a shadow coming across somewhere. And this was not the case. Right. And I just thought that that like, made it really, really crisp on screen. And mm -hmm. uh, I have to say yeah. that. The yeah. graffiti, the whole environment, the rowdy, how loud the crowd was. I felt like I was at a beach volleyball tournament. I was like, this is amazing because people are commenting in between plays. And I'm like, yeah. yes, this is when you interact with the crowd and you're talking to them. You're throwing the ball in the crowd. They throw it back. Then you serve. You're like getting everybody involved and like they're on the court with you. And that so was, true. this event was for sure the most I've ever felt it being like that where you're like, oh, everyone involved is so stoked to be there. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to set this completely apart from tennis and that's yeah. Oh, yeah. as soon as i saw the images of the graffiti on the wall everything super colorful the crowd being hyped being energized being you know creating some interaction between the players and and the audience i was like this is different this is a different sport with different energy and they've displayed it perfectly yeah, yeah, that's so true. I, I love the casual nature of pickleball. And I think it's because like what Rich was talking about, you just like pick it up and you play. You can play with anybody. And I don't want to, I'm not downplaying tennis. I'm a tennis fan. I love tennis, but it's, it's almost like a stiff environment. It's like that, like you have to be so, you're like walking on eggshells almost, you know? And that's like yeah. the element I always felt. I played in high school. I never fit in with that culture because I'm like, I'm a freaking loose cannon out there. I have red hair. I'm fiery. I want to like get engaged. Yeah. And that's like the part about pickleball, which I think is fun from a fan standpoint and the athlete standpoint is it's like buttoned up enough 
but like still casual and it still has that fun relaxed feel while also still being extremely competitive and so i think that's a great point by you tyson and something that i think also was apparent in this tournament even like like the owners right so like the hard eights they're you know a bunch of guys on wall street that just love sports betting and they love sports they're like I thought it'd be cool to be a GM, like one of the original owners. So they're behind their team. Like he, the one of the guys like texted Steve Coombe was like, Hey, um, am I going to get kicked out of this event? If I get too rowdy? Cause I'm like planning to go like full steam <laughs> ahead. Okay. And Steve was like, no, like do we want all of it? Like go, yeah. you know, bring, bring it basically. And he's like, and I know a guy, if you get kicked out, I know a guy that can get you back in kind of thing, but I think you're that's fine. the cool. <laughs> you're fine. But that's cool too. Like you have so you, that engagement from an ownership. It's not like this, like separation of like the pedestal of the billionaire owner, like in traditional sports, yeah. you know? And then it's, it's, I don't know, like, yes, these guys have a lot of money, but it's still like this common ground, right? Cause we all play it. We all love it. Nobody would be here if they didn't. So I don't know. It's just really special and unique in that way. Because think about NFL, NHL, half these owners didn't play NHL, you know, or like NFL, but like the owners here have or played like it. Playing. They love yeah. it. Like, yeah. that's cool. I don't know. That, that's It's just unique and so fun. It makes it, it just adds to the whole thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Casey, what team are you going to try and be on next year? Well, I mean, I feel like I, I kind of need to wait for all the names to come out because I'd like, okay. you know, I don't want to be on like a team where I'm not a fan of the name. I want the name to be rad. I want it to be really oh. cool. So then I'll make my selection from there and I'll, you know, get my marketing, my scouting tape out. I'll have my highlight reel sent out. Okay. I'll do a visit. I'll With visit explosions campus. and stuff? With, with, yeah, really extreme high-end graphics. And then I'll tour the campus. Um, <laughs> you know, hopefully, hopefully it goes well. So that's, that's kind of what I'm waiting for, for, for next year. But, oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Right yes. now I'm just glad they all accept the mullet. Cause if, if they didn't, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> that's where tennis, I walk up and play tennis and I feel awkward. Like everyone's, just, <laughs> yeah. everyone's judging me. You're not welcome yeah. here. Yeah. Like get out of here. We don't you know, know you and you might be an yeah. Olympian, but please leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is this guy? <laughs> they know him. They know him on all the courts. <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious i'm looking forward to the that's draft true. honestly i mean we have one more new ownership uh announcement at some point in the future yeah and then the draft and i'm really excited to see which players go where how the teams stack up and what the season is going to look like and uh BLQK just has like the secret like coffee sauce or something going it must on be the they're... caffeine is just so pure it oh. must be so pure. So pure. <laughs> we gotta figure gotta out be. what they're putting in that. <laughs> yeah, we I do. need some of that. The it's rest like of this infused week infused in their actual jersey, so they're just <laughs> oh, constantly absorbing through yeah. their glands. Yeah, wow, it's genius. So actually, you should actually <laughs> really do is. that with the clothing line. <laughs> right, hi guys. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's go. Get feet in my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> when I sweat, uh, it activates the caffeine, and then it actually like the, I think it's just that. detergent. It's a new right. technology. Oh, <laughs> clothing detergent that you would do. Um, <laughs> anything else, guys? Anything else we got going on? No, I don't think so. I don't just think so. Pickleball and chill. Uh, you know. I did yeah. notice that my son's middle school, mm -hmm. or sorry, yeah, middle school. They have about like forty courts now. That they like lined out on the blacktop and there's no nice wow. temporary net so they pull them out and they get a play during like lunch break that's cool it's so many courts i love and like, that wow, it's already if it's already at that stage which is a perfect sport right because everyone can mm -hmm. come in easily mm -hmm. and kind of compete and play and hit the ball over that that 100 percent kind of circles back to what rich is talking about in the future of the game and how it evolved because you know my 10 year old's always like dad have you thought about this and i'm like i haven't thought about that because they're just so creative as kids yeah. yeah it's gonna evolve quick now it's gonna be cool i love that it's so yeah. cool it's true i mean even in mexico los barriles a little off the map place in mexico there's beautiful 15 courts and like yeah. everyone from the community goes there that's it's really so cool. cool i can't wait to see i'm happy that we're a part of it because it just keeps getting better yeah i know uh and uh i'm sure we'll have more exciting news net next week uh, until then, mm -hmm. thank you everyone for tuning in to Inside Major League Pickleball, and we will chat at you next week. Thanks, Casey and Michelle. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you guys. See you later. See you next week.